For the first edition of the new Tea and Tactics segment, I've got a great little guest with me alongside me who's going to be just over here on the screen. Um, his name is Alex Bono, and I hope he doesn't mind me saying this, not to confuse him with the U2 singer. Yes. Um, <laughs> or Sonny and Cher for the American listeners. You know, there's a couple different yeah. artists in history that share a last name, but no yes. reference to any of them. Yeah, I actually Googled it, and there's Alessandro Bono as well. There's a, few. There's a there few. is a few, yeah. I don't listen to any of the, the ones that you would have Googled. No? No? Oh, that's a shame. <laughs> do, you, do you enjoy music at all? I do. Playing I music? love music. I, I'm, you know, I'm sorry I'm not a U2 fan. And so whenever no, I get comparisons, like, you know what? I'm not even a fan. So, like, you can <laughs> you can find me U2 sh- shit all you want, but at the end of the day, it doesn't make any difference to me. <laughs> Yeah, to be fair, I have seen them. I have seen them live, but that was many, many years ago now. Yeah. Um, in the glory in, days. In the glory days. Oh, yeah. uh, big big rock show, the whole kit and caboodle, but you know, oh, yeah. not now. They've, yeah. they've lost it a little bit. Oh, yeah. but anyway, that's kind of a uh, tangent already. Oh. Um, but it's, I want to give a little bit of background. Last season, you made 19, uh, 15 appearances in total for the Black and Red. Kept an awesome nine clean sheets in that. Uh, in that time frame, which is r- really cool to see. Um, I think you've taken your opportunity by some after Tyler Miller was being out injured. I'm really pleased to see the, how well you've done um, stepping up. But yeah, welcome to the show. Thank you. Glad to be a part of it. Yeah. With it being team tactics and being a brand new segment, I've got to ask, first things first, what's your favorite formation? Uh, I personally love a uh, 3-5-2. I think it's oh. great. I love uh, letting the wingbacks fly. I love getting numbers forward. I like to play it more as a three rather than a five. Um, yeah. Just because, you know, if you've got athletic wing backs and you've yeah. got some athletic center backs that can cover ground, um, it really allows you to, to, you know, to send numbers forward and, and be dangerous in the attacking area. Yeah. Yeah. Let's see. For me, it's all about the 442. Oh, of course. Well, you know, <laughs> I'm English. It's got to be the 442. Of course. What else would you do? <laughs> Have you seen it? I don't know. I don't know whether it, it made its way over across the pond. But Mike Bassett, England manager, don't know whether that film made it across. No, I don't think that was part of our uh, our prep for for our preseason games yet. <laughs> Watch it; it's hilarious. <laughs> Hopefully, Sam knows about that film as well. Hopefully, um, but yeah, like I said, it was your first season with the Black and Red last year. Um, how was it for you coming in? Uh, you came in at the same time as Tyler Miller, mm-hmm. obviously battling for that number one spot. Um, how did it go for you? How do you think it went? Yeah, we we obviously both came in as free agents last year, um, new to the team, so it was nice to have a clean slate and, and be able to compete and, and try and fight for number one spot. Um, you know, at the end of the day, it, it came down to a coach's decision, and um, that's kind of the way it went. And I knew that throughout the season, uh, whether it be injury, form, something, just getting an opportunity based on on training well that. I would have an opportunity eventually, and and my focus at that point solely was to take advantage of it and, and make sure I, I made the most of it, and make it as hard as you know as it could be for the staff to, to take me out of the game. Yeah, I don't like I said from the stats, uh, they don't lie. You did really well. Like I said, nine clean sheets is unheard of in just fifteen appearances. So I, I've got to applaud you for that. You. Um, but obviously, that was last year. This year is completely different again with uh, new head coach and new uh, front office staff as well. Um, very early days, but how's that been so far? Yeah, it's been a nice transition. Um, you know, the new faces have come in and they've added an energy. Um, they've added a real driving force to moving the club in the right direction. Obviously, I've only been here for a year, but, you know, it feels like a special place to me. And, and I really enjoy being at DC United. And it's, you know, obviously one of the most historic clubs in the league. Um and while celebrating that history and while celebrating the legends that have been part of this organization, um, we don't want to hang our hat on that, right? Like we want to make yeah. our own history for the club. That's, that's what it's about. And the last few years haven't gone quite as everyone hoped. Um, but the messaging has been very clear from, you know, from the higher ups early on in this preseason that yes, we'll celebrate it, but we're moving on from that. We need to forge our own modern history of the club. And that's where, yeah. that's where we're headed. Compared to Wayne, uh, when he was head coach, any sort of big differences between him and Troy? Um, what are sort of the key things that you found different? Yeah, the style of play is going to be uh, a little bit different. Um, you know, the way that that Troy coaches the team is is 
miles different, not in a, a better or worse way, not to knock anything that's, that's happening now or going on in the, in the past, but yep. um, there's an energy to Troy that really uh, sends shockwaves to the group that really um, brings the energy and, and brings the discipline every single day. And I think that's something that um, this club and this group of guys needed. Um, and it's been refreshing in, in that sense. Um, it's been really nice to just to have the faces around that, uh, you know, are 100% committed to, to bring this club forward and, and moving them forward to be a successful club again. And, um, it's not that that didn't happen in the past, but yeah. it's a real driving force now. And, and it's very evident in the day to day that that's the goal. Um, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're not here to, um, compete and try and make playoffs. We're, we're here to, to, to make a club that competes year in and year out for trophies. That's yeah. Again, really good to hear things like that. Um, very, it makes it a lot more exciting from our point of view, from the fan side to hear things like that. So we've got something to really look forward to when we do go back to Audi field and have that opening game of the season, which it's a shame. It's a half 12 kickoff for me again. <laughs> what, yeah. what, why can't we have more at mid afternoon kickoffs? I, I've been saying really this. Nice. I personally, I personally enjoy a day game. I really do. And oh. uh, you know, with the new Apple deal and all the stuff that's going on, it seems like they're kind of, uh, setting the schedule so you know yep. trust me i'm with you if i had any any say in the matter you know there'd be more day games for us i did see there was a couple of uh fixtures that are at what i would call sensible times i think it's the inter miami yeah and i think it's charlotte off the top of my head i'm not sure i mean i know that inter miami one uh, two o'clock eastern yeah. game i mean that's like uh it's you a know. 7 p.m kick off for me yeah and it's, it's DC in uh, early in the season, it's not like it's that warm. And so the later you get no. the night, the colder it gets, uh, especially those early and late season games. I'd like to see a bit more bit more daytime kickoffs for us. Yes. Yeah, I remember uh, seeing some of the games in the past uh, early season. At, one springs to my mind was Atlanta, and it was just stormy. Oh, yeah. And the people were cold. And it's like, oh, yeah. It's, it's not what you want to be doing. Oh, it's not clear. It's, it's not clear. you got to battle through it. No. Um, anyway, uh, back to sort of preseason stuff. You're in Saudi Arabia right now. Um, what's that been like? I think this is off the top of my head. It's the first time that we've done a preseason tour abroad. Uh, yeah, I mean, this is my first um, first preseason outside of North America as a professional. This is my 10th season, so I've, I've yeah. had quite a few of them. But um, yeah, it's. I mean, for us, it's business as usual. We were at the hotel. The hotel looks like any other hotel that, that you'd be in. <laughs> Uh, in any other part of the world, you know, the field yep. is is uh, really, really well taken care of, really well manicured. Um, so that's nice. You know, obviously in D.C. it's been cold. We had, you know, a good chunk of snow this year. So yep. we're on the turf to get off of that and to get here and, and get on some grasses uh, has been refreshing. So for us, it, it is really business as usual. The surroundings are a bit different. It's like no place I've ever been before. Yep. Um, and you are kind of immersed in a different culture that you really have this wide world view of that you know, you get to experience for yourself now a little bit and uh, see just what's happened over here. Have you had much opportunity yet to go outside of the hotel and actually take in any of the surroundings yet? Or has it just been focused on the football? Yeah, not as much yet. Um, Gaffer keeps us pretty busy with uh, with meetings and, and video and, and obviously trainings and stuff like that as, as we're all, you know, we got a lot of new pieces and a lot of new faces. So that's obviously yeah. the first priority. Um, I do believe we have a day off coming up soon, which will... Uh, I think the guys will enjoy very much and that'll give us a chance to kind of go out and explore a little bit. Yeah. What is the weather like out there? Because I, I, to be honest, I've not actually looked at that part of things. But well, you're, a, you're a Celsius guy, right? I am a Celsius guy. Yeah, like I was in Toronto for eight years. So like Celsius is, is all me now. Yes. So I'm, yeah. It's been like, you know, 24, uh, 25 during the days. Nice. Um, nice little light breeze would like some more sun. Like I heard, you know, the sun's always out here. We haven't seen that much of it, but oh. we're uh, we're hoping that it comes out. Um, but yeah, it's been, temperature has been great, really comfortable conditions. Oh, can't argue with that much yeah. better than what it, well, mm-hmm. to be fair, today has been pretty mild for us. Here you go. Not, we're currently what, 13 degrees right now. There you go. So uh, I'll take it. It's for, been better than what it yeah, has been, which has been like, not bad for January. It's very warm for yeah. January. I'm not used to that. That's right. Yeah. I've got, I've got my big thick uh, coat over there. I'm like, I don't need to wear that. <laughs> See, that's like, that's like summer, you know, 13 is like nice weather. Well, oh yeah. Get- I mean. If, as soon as you get to double digits, that's it. If you get oh. caught out where I'm from in the northeast, if you get caught wearing a coat, yeah, no, that's it anymore. No, not at all. Mm-hmm. Um, 
so yeah, so you're on preseason. Um, how much are you looking forward to getting back to Audi Field and oh, ready for that opening game? Can't wait, can't wait. You know, it's the off season for us was was really long this past year. Yeah. Um, and so by the time you know, the nice part about the off season for MLS is that it's during the holidays, and so you really get time to relax and be with family and friends and yeah. all that sort of thing. But by the time the holidays are over, you're like, all right, I'm I'm ready to get back into it. Like this is I've been just working out for too long. I'm ready to get back into training, ready to see some faces again and, and start building relationships with the guys. Um, and obviously then going into preseason, it's very exciting at first. And then it starts to drag a little bit and you're like, all right, now I'm ready for the first game. You know, like we're just into that point where uh, training's great. We're making big strides every single day in, in improving our group and improving uh, what we're trying to do. And now everyone's just starting to look forward to getting back to DC. And, and obviously the first game is, you know, it'll be here before you know it. It's it's very exciting to get that get those fixtures back on. Definitely. I've got to renew my app, my MLS season pass uh, really in, the, in the next couple of days. I think it's due very shortly. Yeah. Yes. That's a. Uh, it's to be fair. It's I can't get over how good value it is. Yeah. It's ridiculously good value. Yeah. So, yeah. I can't argue. Right. We're gonna go into some getting to know you a little bit more now. So you mentioned already you've been a professional player for. 10 years now uh is this your 10th season itself it's or going was... into my 10th season yes Coming into 10 seasons so uh, before um dc united and toronto talk us through your career um who were you playing before that yeah so i was uh, born and raised in syracuse new york um small city about halfway in between new york city and toronto uh, about four hour drive each way which i know for you guys is is pretty long so yeah it is uh, four long. hours long but for us that's like you know you can do that a day if you, you know, back and forth in a day if you really want to. Um, so I was born and raised in Syracuse. I went to university in Syracuse. Um, and after my third season there, I had an opportunity to leave and enter the draft. Yeah. And I was picked up by Toronto in 2015. And I spent eight years at the same club there. Uh, and then I was a free agent after 2022. And 2023 was my first year with DC United going into my second now. So going from one team for so long into another one, how did you find that transition? Was that a bit weird or yeah, it's a did you just kind of take to it all right? It's a bit different. I, you know, I've been around, you know, enough locker rooms where guys are in and out and you're meeting new faces year to year. Um, but I never been that new face and that, you know, mm-hmm. outside of my first year and I was, a, I was a kid, you know? And so, um, as an adult, like having to, to make that transition and, kind of getting to know everybody um, and trying to mend relationships with the guys that have been in the position I was in where I know most of the guys and we're welcoming someone in. Um, it was definitely different, but we had, you know, we have, we had a, a great group of guys here that were really welcoming, uh, got on really well with, with all the guys. Um, and it felt pretty seamless in the end. Like obviously the moving, the, the off the field stuff can be a pain at times. Um, but at the end of the day, the, the, the club and the guys in the locker room, the, the people surrounding the club, all the backroom staff, they make it really comfortable for, for new guys coming in. So I'm obviously really grateful for them. That's good. So moving away from that, if you could play alongside anybody right now, whether it's from the past or present, who would it be? Past or present, who yeah. would it be? Oh, man. I think... Um, I would really like to play with like a John Terry or a Jamie Carragher. Oh, I think that would be really fun. Like, I think those guys are, are warriors. Uh, I love like the grind of like a one mil win, you know, and those guys are like the Kings of just uh, of laying their body in the line, bunkering down anything to keep a shut out. And so uh, I think it'd be really cool to play with one of those two guys. Yeah. I've already got the, uh, the clip of uh, John Terry diving headfirst into yeah. into the ball and just oh, things yeah. like that yeah incredible it's, it would be interesting to play alongside i think oh yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> certain leader on the pitch anyway. when i did a bit of um i don't know what i should say this but uh, i'm going to i'm uh, mm-hmm. doing some research i thought i'd uh, do some help me out uh, with uh things like chat gpt and uh the google bard stuff just to see what they would say right and they came each one came back there saying that uh you've got some great leadership skills me yeah wow yeah okay. i know would you, uh, would you say you're a bit of a leader on the pitch i have explored ai enough to to know <laughs> how true that might be but 
I do, um, you know, I, I do think that a goalkeeper's role is to kind of be that secondary captain on the field. You're, you yeah. see everything. You have to be one of the most vocal guys in the field. And so, um, you know, I, I appreciate that, but I, I definitely do see myself as a guy who, who leads on the field and, uh, who's always communicating and, and trying to make sure guys are in the right spots. Yeah. So then I'm going to go through with a, a couple of sort of random questions. So you mentioned about music. Um, yes. You like your music. I do. Um, if you were on a desert island and you had one album that you could listen to, what album would that be? <sighs> wow. There are so many that come to mind off the top of my head from so many different decades. Do I get like a, you know, can I pick like a, a greatest hits album? Like an artist yes. greatest hits album? If it's an album, then it's an album. It's an album. Um, yep. No, you know what? I'll, uh, I was going to say like a, uh, like a Michael Jackson greatest hits would be like probably one of the ones you could listen to for the longest time. I'm a big yeah. Billy Joel guy. So like a, a Billy yeah. Joel uh, greatest hits would be another one where could just go on and on. But I think um, in the modern sense, I love Justin Timberlake. I think he's extremely talented. So yeah. his uh, 2020 album that came out, I think my freshman or sophomore year of, of college. And I mean, we were playing that on repeat all the time. So I'll go with that one. Justin Timberlake 2020 experience. Nice. There you go. Not what I would choose, but fair enough. <laughs> That's the beauty of music though, right? Like, yeah, you know, there's so many different varieties and yeah. everyone's got their own taste. And yeah. to be fair, mine just changes. Yeah. Like Less every thing. month. Like this morning, you know, we got back from train this morning and I, I had like a Frank Sinatra playlist on. Oh, nice. You know, and then uh, yesterday it was like a, a, like a funk disco playlist. And then sometimes I'll throw in like a little country. And then it's like Michael Jackson, oh, and then, you know, Justin Timberlake yeah. and some modern stuff. Exactly. All over the place. Why not? And then so outside, also outside of soccer, what, what do you do? What kind of hobbies do you have? Yeah. I, uh, I love to golf. Um, yeah. Handicap? Like 10 or 12. I'm, I'm working on it. Not we're, bad. Not you bad. Know, we're competent. Um, yeah. But we've got some guys in the team that are, that are sticks that can really play. So yes, um, yes. they keep me kind of striving for more. Um, I've got a dog that keeps me oh. busy, just a little guy, but the, sometimes yeah. those are the most, the biggest handful. Um, so yeah, I, I just got engaged. Um, oh, congratulations. Thank you. Last summer. And so I've had the dog for eight years, but now if she's been in the picture, that dog is no longer mine anymore. Like that's, uh, it's, yep. He has what's yours is mine person. kind of thing. Yeah. Yep. He has yep. a new favorite person. She gets all the attention. And so. Oh, um, nice. From that perspective, you know he's he's special to me, but I I know that he's he's part of our family now. Yeah, and then do you cook at all? Yeah, I love to cook. Love to what, cook. What, what's your go-to uh, meal then? Oh man, I, honestly, in the season, I try and keep it pretty healthy, so it's pretty yep. basic. You know, yep. uh, chicken thighs and and a vegetable, maybe some some rice or something. So I keep it simple. But uh, on my off days or or in the off season, I love to do. Um, like different Italian dishes, different variations of pasta, chicken parm. Um, nice. My specialty, I would say, is I do a really, really good, um, like like upscale sandwiches. So like a really complex steak sandwich uh, or a chicken parm sandwich, like those type of things. I really enjoy making. I find a lot nice. of fun in them. That's um, pretty cool. Passion project of mine would be to have like a uh, like a sandwich shop that just does all like fancy, ah. really high end, well done sandwiches. So in those many years into the future, when you're winding down your career, we know what's going to happen. That's right. You're going to go and open a sandwich shop. Yeah. And it's mostly for me so that I can stop in every day and get my sandwich for lunch. That's for my own, my own place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, you'll eat yourself out of business. Oh, yeah. So, no, that's no, what you're saying, that. isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's why we call it yeah. a passion project, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> if you don't enjoy it, why do it? There you go. Yeah, absolutely. Um, going back to a bit of soccer then, um, or football, or whichever we're going to go with. Um, who's been who's been the biggest influence uh, on your career? Wow. Um, I would probably say uh, my goalkeeper coach in Toronto. He was with me yeah. all eight years. Uh, his name's John Conway. He played in the league for a while. Um, but really from, I mean, like I said, I was 20 when I came into the league, and at the time in the league, that's 
you're a child, right? Like you're just a, yeah. you're pretty raw at that point in time. So he was able to kind of uh, mold me from, from that young age, that young goalkeeper age, especially, and really um, teach me the ways of, of the professional game and, and teach me the, the intricacies of, of being a goalkeeper, the best he knew how. And, um, you know, I would say 10 years later, I, I wouldn't rather have it any other way. And, and he was amazing. He's, you know, a very near and dear friend of mine that I still talk to all the time. So, um, just to have had his guidance and, and him teaching me the way was, you know, it's definitely probably been the most influential in my career. Nice. Right. I'm going to get throw some, just a few quick fire questions at you. So um, this or that, um, right. and I want your quickest answer. Okay. Ronaldo or Messi? Messi. Beat the Red Bulls or win an MLS Cup? Uh, winning MLS Cup. Soccer or football? Uh, football. Shut out or clean sheet? Uh, shut out. Oh. Saving a penalty to win the World Cup or winning all the domestic trophies in a season? Uh, saving the penalty to win the World Cup. Nice. That, 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 they were very quick fire questions. Yeah. Um, we've got a few minutes left. Um, so I'm going to go through some asking you questions about your teammates, if you don't mind. All right. So who's got the worst taste in music? Oh, God. It's got to be one of the young guys. Um, <laughs> Christian Fletcher, um, yeah. Matai Akamboni, one of those guys that puts on that um, that rap garbage that isn't like the rap used to be. You know, like there was a good era of rap and now we're past it. Yeah. And these guys love it, love it. And I cannot, I can't stand it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've, I think I know what you're on about and yeah. I've, I had it mentioned before on the podcast and it's just like, it is always yeah. the young kids. I've always got the worst taste in music. And yeah. Is that because we're a little bit older? I, I, you know what? I, I guess I'm aging myself by saying that. And if you ask them, they'd be like, bones because he's out there playing like, you know, classic rock in the gym. I'm like, yeah, that hypes people up. And they're like, yeah. nobody gets hyped up about that anymore. I'm like, all right, yeah. you know what? Whatever. Better than your job. Yeah. yeah. Uh, going on keeping on the worst themes who's got the worst fashion sense uh maddie click click uh mateus click oh i mean he comes in in some of the most out like look at his instagram you know yeah and he loves it and he thinks it's like the coolest stuff and uh like i'll you know he'll just walk into training one day and i'll be like that's not the one pal that's not what we're looking for today and he uh he's like you know what you're talking about and i'm like you're the only person i know that's ever dressed like this so i, know. I know a little I mean, bit about something it's. I think it's the European flavour um, of it's fashion. Cool. It's because there was a chap who used to play for the club, Eric Sorger, mm-hmm. and very similar. Yeah, should we say? And that had been yeah. mentioned that he had the worst fashion sense. So I think yeah. I'm. I'm seeing a theme. It's not great. Should we say? No, it's not, great. not at all. Uh, in the locker room, who has the most fun? I think I got to be up there. Yeah. Um, I love the the banter of the locker room. I love the you know, when you're in a downtime in training or getting some water, I love a little banter. Um, and that's what kind of keeps us all alive in the, in the hard days and, and yeah. the most difficult sessions where we're all sitting in the locker room and, and someone just kind of, you know, rips a joke or starts messing with someone a little bit and, and, and kind of yeah. gives it a lighthearted mood. Um, but another guy would definitely be Steve Birnbaum. I know, you know, he loves yeah. good time. Um, and really likes to, um, to get the guys going and, and keep us in a good mindset. Yeah. I don't know. I've had him on a, on the show a few times now, and he's never mentioned about him being kind of the, the junkie the one. You know, he's the captain. He wears the armband. He tries yeah. to, you know, he's a business guy. Like, we'll leave training. He's yeah. like, got a business call. You're like, all right. We know <laughs> deep down uh, you love to have some fun. Yeah. And then who is the most serious in the, in the locker room? <sighs> Probably um, Christian Benteke is pretty serious. Yeah. Like he's super, he's really down to earth and like a really genuine, nice person. Um, but at the same time, it's like, he is business. He, it's like family football and could really care less if there's anything else around him, you know? And that's, um, probably part of the reasons that's made him such a good player with an incredible career. Yeah. Um, and we're, we're very fortunate to have him. Um, but he maintains this down to earth, sensible human about him and and that's i think that's a really nice mix definitely well one last question before i let you go is what is your favorite thing about the uk 
Uh, you know, I, I've been once. Um, yep. I went for a training stint in Barnsley for two oh. weeks. Yep. And so I think it's safe to say that that's definitely not my favorite thing about the UK. Yes, that that's absolutely fair to comment that. So I and I don't think I'm in the the minority when I say that. Um, you know, our our director of communications, Sam Legg, is he's an English citizen. He was born. He in, is. And so I think that that's my favorite thing about the UK is is you know giving us Sam Legg. And I'm gonna stand <laughs> by that because Sam is, you know, not because he's sitting behind the wall here. I was gonna say, uh, blink twice if you're okay. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm alive. <laughs> Sam is he's one of the funniest people I've ever met. Um while maintaining his his professionalism. Uh, and he's just a really awesome guy to be around. And and my experience with DC United wouldn't be the same without him here. So uh yeah. he's my favorite thing about the UK. Nice. I like the accents, so I'll, I'll throw the accents in there. Thank you. Well I'll I'll take that one. I'll I want to take a single person, I'll I'll do something about the group. Yeah, why not? <laughs> no, to be fair, Sam is an absolute legend, and I have to thank him for helping me get bringing you guys onto the podcast and getting everything sorted out over here. So I have to uh, give my appreciation to him as well. So, um, but genuinely, thank you for coming on. It's been an absolute blast uh, having you chat and taking the time out of your busy preseason uh, schedule. Um, but I will leave you to it and get back to your. I'd imagine you've got many meetings and things to crack on with so almost dinner time here so we're getting a little hungry oh well there we go then i can hear your tummy rumbling right now yeah yeah i'll <laughs> well, go and enjoy yourself and um again thank you so much for what you've done for the black and red so far and good luck for 2024 thanks james